BBC World News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. Hello, I am Peter Okwacha. Welcome to Focus on Africa. Our top stories. 3,000 dead worldwide as more countries confirm outbreaks of the coronavirus. In the last hour, Senegal and Tunisia report their first cases. With infections now in five African countries, we asked the WHO what's the worst case scenario for the continent. A number of countries with this rapid spread of infection in urban areas in the context where we do not have the facilities for containment. Thanks for joining us here on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. In the last hour, Tunisia and Senegal have confirmed their first cases of coronavirus. It has now spread to more than 60 countries around the world, and the number of deaths stands at more than 3,000. And Italy has also confirmed it has 2,000 cases with more than 50 deaths. Today, Iran has reported a 50% rise in cases, including the death of a high-ranking advisor, to the country's supreme leader. More than 90% of the deaths are in China's Hubei province, the epicenter of the virus. An encouraging sign, China has reported its lowest daily number of new infections since late January. The biggest hotspot outside China is South Korea, where infections are surging, with almost 500 new cases reported today. In Africa, along with Tunisia and Senegal, Nigeria, Egypt and Algeria have also confirmed cases of the virus. Let's get more on the situation across the continent now. Our health correspondent Roda Odiambo is in Nairobi and joins us live. Roda, what more do we know about these new cases? Uh, what we know so far is that the last cases were just reported less than an hour ago. Uh, the case in Tunisia, this is a man, this is a Tunisian national who had uh, traveled from Italy to Tunisia by boat. And the health officials in Tunisia together with the WHO are yet to trust their contacts. Uh, better yet, the other people who are on board the boat when the man was traveling from Italy to uh, Tunisia. As for the Senegal case, this is a French national who arrived in the country uh, on 29th February. This is just uh, this past weekend. Uh, the Ministry of Health has asked for the flight manifest because he traveled from France to Senegal via Air Senegal. And uh, once they get the flight manifest, then they will be able to trace the contacts, everyone who was on board that plane, and either advise them to order them to self-quarantine or isolate them if they're showing symptoms similar to those of the coronavirus. Now, that's Tunisia and uh, Senegal. We've heard about the first cases reported in Algeria and in Egypt, but it seems those numbers have gone up. Uh, so, far, so far, the continent has only recorded uh, five cases of the COVID-19. This is in uh, Egypt, Algeria, Nigeria, Tunisia, and Senegal. The case in Egypt, the, the person uh, recovered from the virus, so he no longer has the virus and uh, was discharged. The two cases in Nigeria and Algeria, they still remain in isolation as uh, health officials monitor how they are doing. And just very briefly, Rhoda, the Medical Journal of the Lancet has ranked several African countries as having a low capacity to handle the coronavirus. Uh, which are some of these countries and why? Uh, some of these countries, it's not only the concern that the Lancet is having together, the CDC and the WHO have the same concerns. And some of these countries are those that have weak healthcare systems. They're dealing with many outbreaks at a go. So in the event that they are dealing with a COVID-19 case, it will be hard to manage such a case. Some of these countries also have um, um, a thin workforce, so they won't be able to take care or monitor the patients very well. So these are some of the concerns that the Lancet, together with other organizations, are having, especially in countries in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, Roda Odiambo, they're live from Nairobi. Thank you very much. Well, the ability to test for the virus is critical in detecting and treating it. But how many countries across Africa can actually detect it? The BBC's senior Africa correspondent, Anne Soy, spoke to the Africa Regional Director of the World Health Organization, Dr. Machijo Moeti. We now have uh, 33 countries that can test for this virus. 
which is a huge relief in terms of that necessity of sending specimens internationally to confirm cases. And we expect in the next couple of weeks that all 47 of our member states will have the facilities to diagnose this virus. Are African countries generally prepared? Countries are working very hard to be ready for that. Uh, we've carried out training of uh, healthcare workers, training of trainers, and now who are now training healthcare workers in countries about recognition, how to provide care. I do recognize that uh, providing care is one of the areas where still a lot of effort needs to be made. First of all, this care needs to be provided safely in such a way that it does not then become uh, the occasion for spread of infection either to healthcare workers or to other people. So that uh, isolation while providing treatment, making those facilities available safely is very, very important. And then for people who become severely ill, there is need, of course, since it's a respiratory illness, to provide them with oxygen. Sometimes people need ventilation, and this is a challenge for our countries in terms of availability of such equipment and facilities. What's the worst case scenario? For me, the worst case scenario would be a number of countries with this rapid spread of infection in urban areas in the context where we do not have the facilities for containment and for caring for people to minimize the mortality. And finally, on travel restrictions, um, we know the position that WHO has taken, which is that you don't advise travel restrictions to be imposed. But we have seen countries have been coming under pressure uh, to impose travel restrictions, especially on flights coming in from China. Is there any scientific basis for these decisions? We have seen, not only in Kenya, but a number of countries take uh, such measures. What WHO has done is issued guidelines and are asking countries to be evidence-based and to work on that principle of not isolating countries unnecessarily. And we hope to get the understanding of uh, decision makers in the countries and of the public because very often it is pressure from the public that is driving such decisions. We've understood that in some cases there have been demonstrations demanding that flights from China should be stopped. I think specifically around China what, what we have observed is that they themselves have taken very active measures to minimize the spread to other countries from China itself. People who are traveling internationally are uh, reviewed, they are observed, they are monitored and therefore we, we have actually seen, as I, <clears throat> I said earlier, that uh, transmission from China itself to other countries happened in the early stages of the outbreak, but not laterally. So I, I think that is something that needs to be taken into account as countries are making decisions about this, uh, these uh, measures. As Africa's regional director for the WHO, Dr. Machidiso Moweti. Lord Peter. Many thanks, Victoria. Thank you very much. Now, just before we go, another look at our top story. Tunisia and Senegal have confirmed their first cases of coronavirus. It has now spread to more than 60 countries worldwide, five of them in Africa. That's it on Focus in Africa. Thanks for watching. See you again very soon. Goodbye.